everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Limode and today on Hot Limode we are coming to you with our July 2021 fashion roast. There were a bunch of looks that we must discuss in this video. Now if you are a channel member there is a full video that has the entirety of I think like 50 or so looks and if you're not a channel member well you're still gonna get a good helping of fashion moments. We're gonna be breaking down some of the most exciting interesting cool different looks that we've seen throughout the month of July. July for 2021 from your favorite celebrities doing stuff out and about living their best lives. So without further ado, let's get into it. Andra Day. Now, if you do not know who Andra Day is, iconic singer and actress, most recently played Billie Holiday. She is wearing God Save the Queens, which is a brand that I feel like I've possibly heard of, but off the top of my head, can't really recall. But I like this dress. I'm not really like super into the whole mesh sheer moment, but at the same time, I can like get into it. I think in recent years when the mesh is really, really done super duper well and it matches skin tones and it feels almost like it's not actually there, I can be sold on a mesh. And I feel like Mugler has been pretty great at doing that sort of moment. Now, God Save the Queens, I don't know if this is like part of their aesthetic or whatever, but I like the sheer dress. I like the fact that it looks like bra moment. There's some sort of sheer dart section going on right here. And then it sort of falls into three strips of black sort of swags of fabric that showcase the leg area, the sort of upper pelvis, lower stomach area, and really like gives you a full on this is like meant to be chic and sexy at the same time I think it's really sweet I actually think that it's a fun cool interesting moment I think that obviously it plays into the sort of current zeitgeist of Mugler and these sort of cat suits that utilize different colors to contour and construct different visions of the body but I think this is done in a way that yeah I'm sure Mugler sort of really was the one that put it on the map but this is doing it in its own way. It's not like super referential. It's not super derivative. It feels different. And so I'm not mad about it. Next up is Ariana Grande and she's wearing Uliana Sergenko. I believe Uliana is a Russian designer. I could be wrong. I mean, it's giving Slavic vibes, but it's really just a very simple sort of super short cocktail dress. It has some sort of cutout here in the middle and then there's a piece of mesh that's sort of holding the two bra cups together. I'm kind of disappointed by it in reality because I think that it's a missed opportunity. The mesh you could take out if you wanted to but I'm sure that they didn't want to for Ariana for whatever reason because they didn't. But I feel like how do we utilize the tights that are here which I like. I like the fact that she's wearing tights. I think it's fun. I think it's exciting but I wish we'd use the tights and sort of tied them into the mesh mesh up here, maybe got tights in a skin tone matching sort of vibe here because then they could have played off of each other but I'm just like let's find a way to not make Luke have to look at the mesh. It's selfish of me but that's what I need in my life. I will say I love the shoes. These platforms are amazing, insane, they're kooky, they're crazy but also they're very Ariana Grande. I feel like that's become her new sort of signature are these like platform heels which I love. I'm here for, I'm happy to see it, and I want more of that. Overall, I do wish it was a bit more exciting. Always want a bit more exciting, but I have been seeing Ariana in recent months get into the fashion moment a little bit more. There was a Versace look I didn't get to cover on the channel, but it was cute for her. I'm into it. So like, I want to see this evolution of Ariana continue, and let's hope that this is just a very sort of commercial, accessible look that she's trying to give to the audience, and that she's gonna turn it out in something a bit more exciting as time goes on. Next up is Bella Hadid and she is wearing Louis Vuitton. This is a sort of chainmail excursion extravaganza. It definitely is from what, Resort 2021, which had this sort of Pierre Cardin sort of like space age feel to it, which like all of Nicolas Jasquier's collections do. But this one was particularly inspired, in my opinion, by like Paco Robin. I'm into it. Like, I'm not super duper mad about it. I like the blue. I like the sort of fringe with the black. I think it's kind of cute. I think it's kind of funky. It was an interesting look from that collection. Overall, I'm not like super duper mad about it. Could it be more exciting? Obviously, always could. But for the most part, I don't hate the actual dress. The shoes, not obsessed with. The length is a little bit weird. The square toe with the heel, meh, looks a little bit strange. Next up is Beyonce and she is wearing Christopher John Rogers and 
so far. So Beyonce was spotted out in New York. She was wearing this white shirt. It's a little tied. She understands it's humid as shit in New York. You feel like you're swimming down the street at all times. She is wearing this flare sort of wide leg pant from Christopher John Rogers. I believe this is from the spring 2021 collection. And it's a beautiful sort of neon yellow with red and blue florals throughout. It's that signature Christopher John Rogers vibrant, punchy, over-the-top, colorful experience. There also is a white, medium-sized Telfar shopping bag, which, like, happy to see. Living, laughing, loving. Telfar is a brand that, if you guys do not know, is all about the sort of, like, modern idea of asymmetry and deconstruction, but they also have put out a bag called the Shopping Bag, which has taken social media by storm. It's super-duper accessible. Telfar Clemens himself wants to keep it at that price range of around, like, $200 or so, so that people actually can like buy into a brand that they really love and really appreciate. I own two Telfar bags, proudly owning the shit out of them. Honestly, I like to see Beyonce wearing a Telfar moment too. People were scared that this was gonna like raise the price of the Telfar bag. I don't think that's gonna happen. I just feel like Telfar understands that his bag is for the people. He wants it to be for the people and he's always spoken about how he wants it to be for the people. I get the fear, but also I don't think that it's gonna happen. I think the Telfar bags are gonna stay pretty good in terms of accessible luxury items. We're here for it. Overall, I'm just happy to see like two young American brands sort of being like promoted and shown and on the body of Beyonce. With New York Fashion Week coming up, I am so pro designers from the United States of America. I think it's cool to see Beyonce sort of going and showing different designers. I'm sure that she bought these things as well. I've heard different designers speak about the fact that Beyonce buys clothing from their brands and then they don't know about it until something like this happens. I think Maureen Sayre said on a podcast a while ago that she had no idea Beyonce was going to wear the Crescent Moon bodysuit in her Disney Black is King movie. And she saw it and she was like, wait, what is happening? And it's because Beyonce buys, she's a buyer. The Christopher John Rogers and the Telfar were probably bought or most likely were bought. We're happy to see it. Beyonce is a client. Next up is Billie Eilish and she is wearing a Gucci look from the fall 2021 collection. Now this was this hacking of Balenciaga. You know Balenciaga and Gucci are both part of the caring conglomerate so it makes sense that these brands would sort of like trade tropes. You can see that this is in a sort of Gucci monogram that has the Balenciaga monogram over it, or it's not a monogram, but the Balenciaga sort of logo by Dima Vasalia over it. And then in reality, it's in the sort of like track windbreaker sort of style that's a little bit like off the shouldery feeling, which is very much so Demna's Balenciaga. So like I'm seeing that element of it with the black pant with slash down the front. Don't love it. It looks a little bit yoga pant, looks a little bit, I'm going to Pilates. The shoe, that's the, not triple S, that's the other Balenciaga super duper popular shoe whose name I do not know. But I like the fact that at least the brown sort of tie in together from the shoe and the jacket. The silver gloves, not really getting the, the origin, although they are from that most recent Gucci collection and have the, the monogram on them. Overall, I think there are better covers for Billy, and also like I would have preferred a more custom Gucci look in that regard. I understand Billy is sort of like trying to do a menagerie of styles, so she's still doing her monogram. She's not throwing that away, but I'm into this new sort of Billie Eilish era of like wearing things that are not just monogram covered suits that are oversized. Next up, Bretman Rock. Honestly, Bretman Rocks, I am fully obsessed. I am so happy. He is wearing Peter Doe, not Peter Do, Peter Doe. This is from the spring 2021 collection. And if you guys don't know about Peter Doe, if you did watch our Rosie Huntington Whiteley video about her outfits of the week, we talked about different designers that sort of stem from the world of Phoebe Philo. Peter Doe is an alumnus of Celine and then started his own brand based in New York. Again, like cool young American New York based designers. We're happy to see them thriving, surviving. I love this look. So it's a black blazer. The lapels are very Peter in the sense that there's these sort of like mirror pieces create this very like hard, rigid, strict, and sharp nouveau take on a lapel. There is a very low cut little tank top, which I believe is the spacer tank. We'll talk about this in a little bit, but the spacer tank is essentially a textile that Peter developed when he was still at FIT. He was like 21 or 22, which developing your own textile at that age is 
insanity to me. But here, Bretman is doing it in a low cut, which I love, like, the girls are out, they're here, they're plump, they are happy, they are breathing. And then you have a deconstructed pant, so on one leg you have full rips right down the front, and then on the other pant you have this sort of, like, side deconstruction, sort of frayed, ripped jean. And essentially this collection was based on when Peter first came to New York and sort of the dressing culture of, I would say, probably the early 2010s, so like 2012, 2013, 2014. So if you're like, why are we bringing back frayed pants? Like that's what Peter was trying to sort of get into. I love the look because I just think Peter Doe as a designer is incredibly interesting. I think all of these elements are a lot together, but somehow Bretman, I think, really pulls it off. Next up is Chloe Bailey and she is wearing Luisa Balu. Now, Luisa Balu, I believe, is a central Martin's graduate and who has pretty much taken over the swimwear industry by storm. I'm kind of obsessed. So she does these really beautiful, I don't want to say stitched together because they're not really stitched together, but it's like a deconstructed bathing suit in the sense that there are different panels that are cut that are held together by like rings. You can sort of see the fact that there are like different elements of the body shown. So like in the middle, there's that sort of cutout and they all sort of pull together towards these rings where they meet and then they hold themselves all there. I will say, do I think it's an interesting tan line? Absolutely. But at the same time, I think it's fun to see a product category in the fashion and sort of garmentation realm like swimwear get a really cool, interesting fashion moment. I know many will be like, oh, it's not really that super duper fashion, but it's like, it is though. It's actually like incredibly interesting. It's incredibly exciting to see. I like the florals. I think they're fun. I think that the way they correlate to the sort of gravity of being pulled and stretched is very, very interesting. I think the cutout element of these little dresses are really, really sweet. I think Chloe looks amazing. I'm excited to see her sort of do more fashion moments in the future because honestly, like her and Hallie Bailey are very much so fashion girls. I don't think they get the credit they deserve, but they are fashion girls. And I like to see that Chloe can be a fashion girl without having to be like in a duo like she's like I'm good like I'm I, yeah she's going to do Little Mermaid I'm gonna hold down the fashion for it thank you so much have a great day and we love to see it next up we have Dua Lipa and she is wearing Courage now this is from the Resort 2022 collection and I believe that this is by the designer Nicola Di Fili. Nicola, I apologize. It takes me about like seven years to correctly get some of these names. Courage is back. Courage is new. Courage is clean. It's very minimal. It's very stark. It's not trying to do too much. And I'm into that. This is a square neck halter top that's like a little bandana. There's been these trends where people will tie bandanas around their bust area and create a top out of it. And I feel like that's what this is playing on. And I like it. I think it's smart. I think it's interesting. I think it talks to current sort of style and moment but made in a sturdy cut instead of it just being like one little wrap around it's multiple different straps so at least you're getting some sort of like structure and some sort of security in that regard but it also has this nice little checkered print it's very clean very easy it still has the Courage little logo on it will I ever understand what that Courage logo means no do I want to no and that's fine you know it's Courage if you know what Courage is and again I think that's the greatest sort of form of branding if you know, you know, and if you don't, well, sorry. I also love these jeans because they have these tiny little hole cutouts here. And I feel like that's like beautiful space age 1960s feels. You know what I mean? Like those sort of ridiculous cutouts were super duper courage. They were super duper hot. They were super duper sexy. And instead of doing them in like a 1960s cut where it's, I don't know, like a baby doll dress that wouldn't exactly be something super duper wearable, done in a denim is brilliant. I think it's a way to sort of adapt to the current culture of showcasing the body is not a crime unless it's an issue for some people in which case like that's a them problem they got to deal with it but I love it I think it's really really smart I think it's a beautiful way to incorporate that history of Courage but in a really modern product that customers actually might want to get into and I could see customers wanting to get into I am a customer that I'm like Please show my random hip bones. I will be so, so happy. I'm into this new Courage moment. I think Dua is doing it well. And you know that I know Dua is doing it well because I didn't call her Dula Peep. I was so caught into the look that I forgot. Next up is Emily Allen Lind and she is wearing Gucci now. She is part of the new Gossip Girl cast. Does she look like a cocktail waitress? Absolutely. I think in a weird way, when I think about Gucci, I'm like, yeah. Do I know it as like, kooky, crazy, over the top, ridiculous. Yes, absolutely. I think we all do. But I do think that prior to Alessandro Michele, prior to Tom Ford, prior to like Don Mello, Gucci was about tailoring. Like it was just like making nice suits for 
people. Uh, that was the sort of vibe. Also, like, the leather, that was important. But it was, you know, known for its tailoring. That's why they have tailoring campaigns. That's why Harry Styles is, like, the face or was the face of the tailoring campaigns. That's, like, what Gucci sort of does. I understand the origin of the look. Do I wish that it was flashed up just a little bit? I'm not saying it had to be kooky crazy over the top of Alessandra McKayle, but would you sort of say, excuse me, can I get another glass of champagne? Absolutely. And that's my problem with this is it kind of diverts back to my Charlie D'Amelio bank teller for Prada moment. I get it. I just think we got to step it up a little bit. Are there any cocktail weenies left? I need to know. No? Could you just check in the back for me, Emily? That would be so great. Thank you. Next up is Emily Blunt, and she is wearing Scaparelli. This is for, I presume, the premiere of Jungle Cruise. And in reality, it's a very sort of commercial Scaparelli look, which I think is funny because, like, Scaparelli and commercial are not things I think about together. But you do have that sort of element of those big, poof, cloud-like dresses from Scaparelli that I personally know and personally love, done in this top here. And in reality, it's just, like, whipped cream, but in clothing form. I like seeing the ripples and the dipples of it. I like seeing the way that it sort of bunches and crunches itself up. I understand that for a lot of other fabrics and for a lot of other designers, I would be tearing it apart. But I think that's also like Daniel Roseberry's whole thing is it's meant to be a little bit surrealist. It's meant to be a little bit out there. It's meant to be a little bit about like letting the unconscious take control. And I think that is this. But at the same time, I think there is a bit of realism in it as well. A high-waisted sort of pant and a nice cream. Like you could get a suit from Scaparelli made in that sort of style and that would be easy peasy. Scaparelli, listen, of course, about the crazy kooky artist collaboration, ridiculous trompe l'oeil sort of styles. But Elsa was also about like making really nice suits when she was still kicking. I think this is maybe like a little bit of an element of that and so I'm happy to see just a nicely cut pant that still holds some interest you know the side little panels look like they're buttoned up and I think that's fun and if she had unbuttoned them they'd probably flap and flare but considering this is Scaparelli it's very commercial and I weirdly enough am into seeing a commerciality from Scaparelli. Next up is Emma Chamberlain and she is wearing Giorgio's Trocopolus. I am very sorry in advance. I like to see Emma sort of exploring and working with different cool young designers and also for those asking. Yes, I do know that Emma Chamberlain has done an Outfits of the Week with Vogue. It'll happen, just give me time. I kind of am obsessed with this little top here. Emma's wearing a really simple pair of jeans. It's black, what I presume are like Levi's, vintage, wherever she found them. It's very Emma, I understand it, I'm into it. That's her vibe, I'm not mad about it. I like this halter moment that's still also strapless at the same time. I understand that this is a knit. See the lettuce hem at the bottom, like thank you Stephen Burroughs. But I like the green and I like the way that the knit sort of splits and you can see sort of elements of the skin underneath. I think it's really smart. I think it's really, really interesting. Something I haven't really seen before. I like the black piping all around. I feel like it's keeping it sort of together. It's not just at the bottom and taking away. It's all throughout the entirety of the garment. I think it's cute. I think it's interesting. Georgios, I'm excited to see what's next. Emma, keep on going. Thank you very much. You know what? The influencers are kind of doing it today putting it out there, letting it be known. Next up is Evan Mock, and he is also wearing Gucci at the Gossip Girl premiere. This to me has more of the Gucci feeling to it. It's in this sort of strange grid motif. It has a little slight flared pant that has the same sort of motif on it, but the colors are different. So one is a little bit more orange, the other a bit more brown. He has some sort of Gucci bag. You can see that sort of red and blue stripe that's signature to certain elements of Gucci, a blue button down shirt and some sort of Gucci little loafer with a monogram sock. I kind of want more, most definitely from Evan Mock. I feel like it's not very exciting, not very interesting. It does sort of feel Gucci-esque once someone says it's Gucci, but want more. I feel like we could have played to the Aki from Gossip Girl sort of vibe as well. Next up is Gemma Chan and she is wearing David Coma. This is a strapless cocktail dress, but it looks like it is some sort of deconstructed blazer jacket that's also partially a dress. So we can see that there are sort of lapels that masquerade as breast cups. You have some sort of like little button style here going on there, pockets. It almost looks like the blazer sort of jacket is coming together and then there's a slit at the bottom. And it sort of has like a blazery feel to it. I definitely think it's interesting. Do I think it's as exciting as I expect? No. The purple arm warmers, I got it. I like the fact that they are arm warmers. Honestly, I feel like it plays into this whole idea of a nude torso moment going on. A lack of clothing there I think is smart. I think it's important. I think it ties it all together super duper well. The shoes, 
meh, could be better. Next up is Hailey Bieber, and she is wearing Alessandra Rich. Now this is, I would presume, a black velvet dress. I think the construction of the sleeves have a sort of Regency sort of feeling. There's that like tiny little sort of poof at the, the shoulder, and then it's sort of a very fitted, full sort of moment. Little V neckline, the black velvet dress goes down the torso. And like, I just, I hate seeing those lines in there because I just know that's some sort of like accentuation of the waist. And then the dress sort of, begins to come together and showcase a lot of sheerness, a little bit of lace elements. And this black velvet panel is then sort of lined in the lace. And it sort of has this very sexy sort of feeling of like showing off up to the hip area down to the shoe. I get it. I like it. I think it's sweet. I think it looks nice on her. I feel like it, it seems like it's definitely a way of doing sort of like sexy, all of this sort of stuff, but it's still glamorous. It still holds like a real sort of elegance in and of itself. I really enjoy it. I must say I'm shocked by my like of this, but it looks nice. Haley did a good job. Next up is Issa Rae, and she got married wearing Vera Wang. Now, this is not an Hot Mode reacts to Say Yes to the Dress, but it looks like Issa has some sort of little nice sweetheart neckline with a embroidered white bodice. The belt, don't love, but alas, it's her wedding. And then a big sort of poofy tool skirt. Honestly, I think she looks really, really happy. I think she looks really, really wonderful. It's not really my place to judge people's wedding dresses. So I'm happy for Issa to wear whatever she wants. Next up is Jordan Alexander and she is wearing Weider Hoft, the German it's not great. That's it. That's all I got. It's not my strong suit, as I feel like we know at this point. So the corset seems to have a little garter moment going on. So essentially, these little garters are actually holding up bows, which I presume are attached not to the pants underneath, but I think it has to do with the actual little piece of organza, I presume, that is sort of piped in this little lace. I presume that's what is being held up. They're not the pants unless the pants are attached to the organza, in which case could be a thing, but then why would you need the garter belt? So that's my, that's my theory. But I like the fact that the garter belt has little bows and that matches the mask and like it's all playing into itself. Listen, is it a little bit obscure? Is it a little bit out there? Do I hate the shoes? Yes. But I appreciate a risk. I'm honestly like actually quite happy to see Jordan Alexander go for it. It seems like a lot of the other Gossip Girl cast was like, Mm, we're good. And like, here's the thing. You're trying to sell us on Gossip Girl. So you gotta turn out a look. But Jordan Alexander as Julian Calloway does turn it out on the show. And I'm happy to see that she's like taking on the moniker of like, I'm the fashion girl. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody else. I'm into it. Next up is Kanye. You gotta talk about Kanye because the Yeezy and Gap collection is coming, I presume soon. But he's also releasing an album called Donda. And in reality, what we have seen at Paris Fashion Week was Kanye in what I presume is a Yeezy Gap collaboration jacket. So it's essentially a jacket that's, I believe, been put out for pre-order. But it almost looks like a normal Kamali sleeping coat sort of style. It has like a little bit of a wrap to it, but it's cropped. So it's not as long as the normal Kamali jackets. I feel like it has a sort of deep history in terms of the way puffer coats are sort of entrenched in fashion history, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, like, you think about Charles James creating his own sort of styles on puffer coats. Then the way that puffer coats have sort of really been ingrained and popularized in a mainstream context through the use and, you know, creation. And then you have to think about how puffer coats in the mainstream have been popularized by the black community. And so essentially that has happened. And then since then, you have Montclair collaboration collections like, you know, Richard Quinn, Peter Paolo Piccioli. There's so much going on with the puffer coat, but I like to see Kanye moving and grooving it in his own interesting little way. I do kind of love those shoes. I don't know why. I'm kind of obsessed. I like Easy. I think it's very smart. I think Kanye is not the greatest designer in the world, but I think Kanye understands that I think Kanye is a very good curator of talent. So I think in reality, he understands that like he has to pick a good design team in order to bring about something that is going to be really, really good. And I think Kanye is very good at that. And also like a lot of designers do very similar things. So I'm not into the whole let's bully Kanye fashion wise. Everything else, none of my business. Next up is Kim Kardashian. Now she went to the Vatican and caused quite a stir and she wore this Baragon dress. Now Baragon, I believe is a brand, I don't know if it's American, but I know that they show during New York Fashion Week. And essentially this is a custom dress because the dress on the runway has the girls out. 
You know what I mean? So like Kim did have this adapted to be a little bit more not fully nude. In that regard, everybody complaining, Kim could have went with the girls out. Clutch onto your pearls a little bit less intensely. But I love the cutouts here. I think they're really, really beautiful. I like the white lace. I think it's really stunning. I think white lace stands for purity. I think it has really, really beautiful sort of connotations back into religious culture of like, especially when you look at Christianity and Catholicism, white doves, Jesus wearing white, dirt is like white, like all of the, the different holidays and, you know, Catholicism have colors white it's an easter thing so in that regard i feel like kim knows exactly what she's doing the cutouts like yes oh really terrible really horrible really horrific again let me preface i was raised catholic i may say however i feel about catholicism but i've been to the vatican i did not burn i did watch a woman wear a 666 devil jersey inside of the vatican i mean like in not even just like vatican city i mean like in the actual vatican like i was there and she was wearing a 666 that said the devil on the back. I don't know if she knew the connotations of said thing, but I've seen shit that's a little bit kooky crazy over in the Vatican. In my opinion, this is pretty fine. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of laid back. And also like the Vatican wanted her to be there. So I think they knew what they were getting. I like the Kim pushed the envelope on it. I think she knew it would piss people off. And like, she knew that would be a cute headline. And I'm not always into the Kim Kardashian headlines and antics, but this is an antic I will get behind. Next up is Kitty Spencer wearing Dolce & Gabbana for her wedding. And again, not saying much about people's wedding choices. Would I wear Dolce & Gabbana? No. I'm sure Kitty is getting a pretty big check so there's that to be completely frank and fair to be open and honest and i'm not co-signing for dolce whatsoever it's a nice dress i like the sleeves i think the bustier underneath is actually really really lovely it has this sort of like old medieval feeling upper crust british aristocracy the design of the dress is nice do I wish it wasn't by Dolce & Gabbana? Absolutely. End of story. Next up is Kylie Jenner, and she is wearing Chet Lowe. Now, I believe Chet Lowe is from New York, but is based in the UK or London. Now, essentially, Kylie is wearing what I believe is one of Chet Lowe's sort of signature styles, which is the durian. I'm going to call this like a dress. I can't, I think it's like a strapless dress. It might be the durian corset. I'm really not super duper sure. But essentially, this is a hand knit, handcrafted style that's based in London. So like it's all hand done. You see these little spikes all over in the dress and the little arm warmers. Arm warmers coming back. Essentially, if you guys do not know what this style is, a lot of it is referred to as like popcorn shirts, crinkle shirts or whatever. It was very popular during like the early 2000s, like 90s craze. I'm not really sure. I can't place it exactly in a decade, but it's definitely of that like early 2000s sort of feel. Chet has sort of brilliantly brought it back, this time done it in knits, where a lot of times this sort of style and technique, which is called shibori or is oftentimes referred to as shibori, is utilized through different sort of poly Esther and like non-organic materials because essentially it's a lot of burning or utilizing heat as a way to manipulate the fabric. Interested in the fact that this is done through a knit because I'm like how does one do this? Chet Lowe would love to know the secret but I shan't share it. I just want to know how it's done. I kind of love it. I feel like it's really fun. I feel like it looks like little spikes. It kind of has like this fun early 2000s who gives a shit sort of phrase and phase to it. I like that Kylie is working with like younger, cooler designers, which I feel like Kim and Kylie, when they do their big sort of like advertising things for the products, they always wear interesting designers, young designers, cool designers, which I appreciate. But I like to see that somebody like Kylie is shining a light on a designer like Chet Lowe and it finally gives me the ability to talk about it. Next up, we're talking about Lady Gaga. So if you guys do not know House of Gucci, which is based on Patrizia Reggiani Gucci, formerly Gucci, is coming out with Lady Gaga playing Patrizia. I can do like a whole Gucci history video if you guys would want. Gaga has been doing sort of not press, but like she's been leaving hotels and the girls are living for it, obviously. She most recently left a hotel wearing this Valentino fall 2021 haute couture set. Now, essentially, this is a feather hat, I believe, done by Philip Tracy. Um, and we've seen these hats for quite some time, in my opinion. It sort of like refers back to like sea anemones coral sort of 
of styles, which is a very historical Valentino motif to tap into. But I love the hat. It's so ridiculous. I love the sunglasses. Very ridiculous. Now the dress, it is a tiny little short cocktail dress, but it creates this really like trapezoid shape which I'm obsessed with. And the fact that Gaga is using the gloves to hold it down so she doesn't show anything is even better because you're like, this is so short. I like a short dress, I do. I feel like they're fun, I feel like they're interesting. I like that it has the turtleneck sort of collary moment going on because it feels very rigid and formal here. And then it's so short that it sort of like defies its own rigidity. It sort of has this like 1960s baby doll mod sort of styling to it as well. Overall, I think it's like, quintessential gaga perfect crazy kooky over the top i do wish that she had worn those like crazy chromatic heels i understand it might have been a little bit too much but like it's lady gaga i don't know if there is too much if that had been like a moment we'd tied it all together i would have kind of really been like oh but i will take i will take this gladly next up is megan the stallion and she is wearing natalia fedner now this to me quintessential Megan Thee Stallion. Megan is currently in this era of showing off her body. She's letting it be known like, hi, this is what I look like. Please enjoy. And I respect the fact that she is just sort of constantly doing it. Like that's what her brand is fashion wise at this moment and she won't let it go. And I respect the aesthetic. Do I wish that there were more sort of like fashion moments going on in that regard? Yes, I do. Cause I do think a lot of brands could actually like get Megan to that place of showcasing the body without it feeling lackluster. To me, this is just like a bunch of crystals in a chainmail sort of style. I do not know much about Natalia Fedner, so this could be a signature of hers. And if this is, congrats. I do like the sort of little crystals on the side that sort of hold together these little strings and stripes. I feel like it's smart. I feel like Megan does like to play to sort of this area from like the upper hip area down the leg. I feel like that is sort of a Megan moment and I respect it and I feel like it's a smart aspect to accentuate. But overall, especially with moments like these where Megan is not being dressed by a brand per se, you know, it's not some like big red carpet, I'd like to see a little bit more of like fashion. You know what I mean? Like I know that Megan can pull it out. Like I've seen her in Mugler. So like I know that's a thing. I just want it to materialize more and I want whoever is styling her and her team to really like give it this like real true bing bang boom moment. You know what I mean? Like bring in an interesting texture, bringing in an interesting color, bringing in an interesting cut that like does the job, aka accentuating the body in the way that Megan wants, but does it in a way that's not just bare minimum. I have no problem with like simple design, whatever, it's great, but at a certain point, it has to be like stepped up in a way that is like referential, contextual, will go down in history. And I want a Megan red carpet moment to go down in history. And this feels like a time we could make it happen. So let's make it happen, people. Next up is Naomi Osaka, and she is wearing Louis Vuitton Resort 2022. Now she is, I believe, a Louis Vuitton brand ambassador or works with Vuitton quite heavily. I love Naomi, I really do. I only watch tennis to watch Naomi. But no, this is not, this is, it's not good. It wasn't good on the runway. I did a review of the most recent Louis Vuitton Resort collection. I don't understand the concept here. I can get into a Nicolas Jesquier, Louis Vuitton moment to a degree. This is too far past. It's a lot. So you have the stripe military style shirt cape that then is tucked into a green seamed skirt, asymmetrical, which is strange. Can't see her arms, which makes her look like she's in a chrysalis. The shoes are not good at all. The shoes are rough. I just want Naomi to not wear that ever again because it's god awful. Next up is Olivia Rodrigo. Now, Olivia caused quite a stir, in my opinion, for the wrong reasons. When she showed up at the White House, not uninvited. She was invited. She is wearing a Chanel, I believe, like spring 1995 jacket, skirt set style in a vintage. Let's discuss. I'm sure that Olivia is trying to go for that like vintage fashion moment, vintage, you know, style, which is a thing. It's happening. I respect it. I'm here for it. Like I don't collect random Prada dresses for nothing. I don't think this was the smartest look to have picked. I understand the thought behind it. You're going to the White House. You are meeting people it's meant to be sort of formal but at the same time like you're young you're trying to like keep your own image you're trying to sort of do your own thing so like I get the sort of pretty and pink like legally blonde style going on so it's a Chanel sort of tweed jacket in a white black and pink 
masquerade plaid pattern. It goes back to the references of tweed, Scotland, Coco Chanel, yada, 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 yada. So like, we got that. We're good. Thank you. I will say, I think that this Karl Lagerfeld era design jacket would have been a lot better had the grid at the waist not been like turned 90 degrees so that it turns into a lattice style instead of a grid because what happens now is unfortunately it's just like a weird accentuation of the waist but like not in a way that's complementary of the waist I think it just rather throws off the entire T of the waist and then also like they put a Chanel name gold belt over it which like first things first if you're gonna put a Chanel belt on things like you want it to really pop you can do that when you put gold over black not when you put gold over white pink and black that just seemed very inconsequential and a little bit of a silly move the skirt is fine and again i get the aesthetic i get what they're going for i just think that was like not the right chanel look to have picked the shoes caused quite a stir because they're giuseppe zanotti they're chunky big old platforms she wore them with socks. I liked the shoes. I thought they were fun. I thought they were interesting. Again, listen, you can only go so far you expect somebody to like switch up their entire aesthetic for the government. I pay my taxes doesn't mean I have to, I don't know, like dress how you want me to dress. In that regard, everybody bugging out, unbug, please. Thank you. I thought the shoes were cute. I thought they fit into her aesthetic. Fine. I'm just mad about the, the skirt set. I just think it's kind of ugly. Could have been better. I would have liked, I don't know, like tweed. I know that was like too much to ask because it's hot. But like, you wore that, so it couldn't have been that hot. Next up is Savannah Smith, and she is wearing Louis Vuitton. Now this is a sort of very simplistic Louis Vuitton style. Essentially, it's like a black cocktail dress that has cutouts on the side that are lined with what look like monogram ends. It almost looks like the monogram fabric was taken and piped, and then you only kind of get half of the monogram flowers or symbols or LVs there. It's on the neck, it's on the cutouts, uh, it's on the hem of the dress. I don't think it was a very smart styling choice whatsoever. I do kind of love the bag. A petite mal, I think is a beautiful homage to a stunning sort of Louis Vuitton trunk moment, but I don't think that the gold bag matches with the black and brown and caramel dress. I'm just not seeing the correlation there. I also feel like, honestly, pull like an older look from a collection from a long time ago in gold. There are some, they exist. Like, do that with the gold bag and that would have made sense. Overall though, I want better for Savannah Smith because Monet Dijon is keeping me literally fed through an IV when I watch Gossip Girl. Next up is Storm Reed and she is wearing Balmain and like, I'm obsessed. This, I believe, is what? Maybe like fall 2020? maybe spring 2021 but I feel like it's fall but essentially it is a pagoda shoulder top in what looks like some sort of like performance knit it has an accentuation of the bust it has all of these sort of ribs that go throughout sort of like they play into this idea of corsetry and boning and all of that and I'm really obsessed with it I think it's really really stunning and then it's paired with a tiny little gray wool short so like it feels like it's a pair of pants that you would wear to work but at the same time it's cut short and they're skin tight and that's really stunning and I'm obsessed with it. Overall I think it's really chic. C'est la vie. C'est bon. C'est bon. There's really nothing wrong with this. Like I think this is perfect. I think it channels this sort of older more corporate aesthetic but at the same time it's super duper fun, super duper interesting, super duper cool with the pagoda shoulder and the rib knit. I like I'm sold. Next up is Violet Tchotchke. Now she is wearing Scaparelli Haute Couture. I believe this is spring 2021. And it's that insane dress with like the amoeba, jeweled teeth, cut out, keyhole center. I love it. I think it's so stunning. And I think the great thing about Violet and what she's done here is she's kind of made it her own. Before the dress has been worn by Emma Corrin in the past, which I'm not opposed to people re-wearing dresses. I think as long as everybody's sort of like changing the things up a little bit to suit themselves. It's fun. And I think Violet is like the perfect example of that. So in reality, you can see this like really short little sort of corset moment going on that's like cinching in her waist like crazy. The gold gloves, I think, play back into the gold teeth all around and on the earrings. I think she looks really stunning. I think it's a great way of adapting a sort of style that is signature Violet Tchotchke to the Scaparelli aesthetic. And I'm into it and I want more of it. I'm loving it. So like, thank you. Thank you. Next up is Whitney Peake and she is wearing Chanel. I believe this is Haute Couture. She wore this to the Gossip Girl premiere as well. And listen, like I'm happy for her to get her Chanel Haute Couture moment. Listen, everybody wants one, I'm sure. The chiffon cape with the matching skirt and the fully embroidered bodice. It wasn't cute on the runway. It's not cute now. It's not been changed and it's not been fixed. It's blah. 
It's uninteresting. It feels very dated. It doesn't really have anything that speaks to any sort of interest besides the fact that it probably took, I don't know, hundreds of hours to embroider that bodice. But again, I say, why waste hundreds of hours of people's time to make something that is just not attractive? Whitney, tell your stylist, pull better. Chanel. Next up is Zendaya and she is wearing Moschino. This was to the premiere of Space Jam and she was trying to sort of recreate her Lola Bunny character in the movie. This is I believe like a Moschino pre-fall collection. I get what's going on here but again I'm just sort of like okay yeah it's there. It's not really super exciting not really super interesting. I expect better from Zendaya most definitely. I don't know, maybe with like a different shoe. I like, I get the pointy heel, like it's, you know, but Zendaya also is like, could wear anything. Plastic bag moment. And I feel like a shoe that was more sporty, but like had a platform or something like that could have worked a little bit better. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of it. And now our last look of the night is Zia Moreno and she is wearing Giorgio Armani. It's this asymmetrical sort of black velvet with a navy blue style and a bow and a cutout and it's just it's a lot and not in a way that is a good a lot it's just too much and that's my thing about Armani is like again impeccably made I am sure is it attractive I don't think so and the thing about Armani is like with Zio she could literally again wear like a plastic bag and I'd be like oh my god wow but I do not think that this is the look for her. I just feel like there are better Armani looks. I feel like there are more interesting Armani looks. I feel like we could have adapted things to be, I don't know, a little bit more short, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more flirty, a little bit more fun. Whatever we could have done that was not this, I kind of would have taken. So that is the end of today's video though, but we have to do our best and worst looks. Best look is gonna, oh yeah. I'm giving it to Bretman Rock. Like that Peter Joe moment, sold. You know what I mean? Like you wanna talk about bringing together Together, different aspects, textures, textiles, techniques, all into one, sold, like really sold. I own a bit of Peter Doe and I'm like, I could not pull my Peter Doe off like that. So thank you, Bretman, for showing us the way. As for worst dressed, oh, I'm gonna have to give it to Naomi. Naomi, I'm really sorry, but there's no saving that. It's just, it's, it's uncomfortable. Still uncomfortable looking at it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Let me know some of your faves in the comments down below and I will talk to you soon. So TTYL.